look at Coach Carew. Yeah, this is this is uh, my 57th year as a coach, and uh, which which could put you on the the border of, of insanity you know, to do something that long. Um, but I, I, I'm getting I'm still getting the enjoyment out of it. The uh, the technical sides of things. It's all, there's only so much you can talk about a pick and roll or boxing out or uh, move the ball from side to side. All the things that you're talking about. Because you could, that can become boring and you could have enough of that. But the thing that makes it interesting is working with the individuals and see how they approach the things that you know they, the way they have to approach things so they can get better. So in that sense, it's like a teacher or a professor school teaches and gives the same talk, but doesn't get tired because he looks at some of the students, how they react to what he's doing is the same thing. So just a, a wonderful man that uh, loves great basketball. And um, you know, he, he uh, has seen a lot of great basketball. He's been a part of of creating, helping to create a lot of a lot of basketball that's uh, the way it's supposed to be. And whenever you have somebody around who is um, in love with the game, it's, it's infectious. And I think it uh, it rubs off on our players and our coaching staff. I started in junior high school. I had very good coaches. Then I had a high school coach, who was really great. And then I went to college and I ran into Bill Van Bredekop, who's since passed away, who. Uh, Played for the Knicks, coached the Celtics, coached Princeton, uh, and he was not a very good X and O man, but his the way he would think about what you should do was beyond what I've ever run into from anyone. I and but X and O's he wasn't good at that. He used to say that chalk. The only thing he does with chalk on the blackboard was to throw it. And that's about it. But in terms of seeing the game and the potential of different people, it was very, very good. So I kind of got lucked out on that one. And then I went to service for two years, came back and started out as a junior varsity coach and was there for four years in eastern Pennsylvania, primarily a football town. And then I went to Reading for eight years which is primary, primarily a basketball town. Things got better. Uh, then I applied for the Lehigh job. Applied for several other jobs, the small jobs, Division Three, with a very good high school record. I didn't get it mainly because I was a phys ed major, which I was not a phys ed major, which I knew I didn't want to do. And um, it's, it's funny. A couple of institutions that that was important. They no longer have his head, which is ironic, you know. Well, I, I think one of the things that's different is the clock. They've changed the clock to 24 seconds, and the fans of of, of the country had pressured that down through the years because there were some nine seven games in college, 9 to 7, 10 to 6, 30 to 15, th things like that, where the fans didn't uh, 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 didn't like that. So they put in a 24 second clock so that would speed up the game. What that has done is, is, is uh, taken away the cerebral nature of the game. You don't, you don't have to set, you don't have time to set things up for what you're trying to do, see. And uh, so some people think that's bad. I, I, I don't have any opinion on that. Um, I know this, that if you watch the Final Four in college basketball, that's pretty darn good basketball, as good as you want to see. If you watch the playoffs in the NBA, that's as good as you want to see. The point to be made is wherever it's done by the people that are the best at it, it comes out good.
it's hard, it's not easy. Because when you get a, a sort of a plump guy, like I am a little on the heavy side, and, and balding my hair, and hobbling around the way I am, but then it's not that easy to talk to a young kid and tell him what he needs to do. It's, it's hard. And so you have to break through that somehow. To break through that somehow, which I've done for the most part, with showing them things that work. And when they find out that they work, then they come back to you. But I mean, if I were a pro player, and would do this, the teaching of that. that I mean, uh, some some kids, I've heard a statement, and they read a statement with a guy on the team listening to me because I was a Hall of Fame coach. Well, I prefer to say that he listened to what I was saying because of what I was saying. That's what that's what it is. But uh, the, 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 that's a, a factor. It's made it harder for me, but I've just plowed through that. You know, um, and eventually they'll they'll start to do what I think they should do, because it works, right? But you you have to you have to you have to realize, especially in pro ball, there are limitations of what of what I'm not saying going to listen to you. There are other forces at work there that are different from college and high school, money, you know, being being traded, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, the whole atmosphere is a lot different. I would say that I would have tips for their parents that don't 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 insist. I mean, the Jimmy Pearsall story, you know, so many of those stories of fathers that were just mothers that just you know try to relive their lives through their children. That doesn't seem to work. That they should play sports, enjoy, enjoy the competition, because competition, when it's fair, is, is definitely good. Sometimes it's not fair, then, they, you know, it's a little different story. But they grow, they get to grow, they get to learn how to, how to uh, live when things aren't going so good, how are they going to behave when they lose and all that kind of stuff. Because he, you have to start uh, winning. You start, winning is the objective thing. And the only objective thing, the other stuff is subjective. And so they get the feeling of being successful, they get the feeling of losing. And then of course, losing to get up from the, from the ground and go at it again. There's so many things there that are important. And so that's what I would say. And you, and you get to fall, they, they get to fall in love with what they're doing, practice hard, you know, play hard, but don't spend too much time you know what I mean? After a while, diminishing returns, you know. The guy tells you he's, he's practiced eight hours during the summer. He's wasted his time. Four, six of the hours were a waste of time, you know. Four, two is enough, right? And uh, make sure that you get everything that you're, that, uh, you're trying to do accomplish. But there's no, there's no secret formula for that. Who's going to wind out to be good and who's going to be bad. The most important thing that I, I see in, our, in, in the development of a child is to have a mother and father. That's definite. I've seen it in every case. When I was coaching in high school and in college, you had kids who had parents who were there for the schoolwork and they were there uh, for parent-teacher conferences and worked with them to make sure that they stayed on the ball, that kind of stuff. Although it's harder being a parent now than ever, even though you have more things than you had then, it's tougher to raise a family today than it was then, because the outside peer groups now seem to dominate, and TV and Hollywood and all that crap that you have floating around, it seems to take care, or take away from the parent-child relationship. Well, I've been here for 12 years, and I've, we've had good times and we've had bad times. We had a stretch there of about eight, nine years where it was really great. I was, I, I was here like on a part-time basis last year and the year before I missed out uh, where it wasn't so good, all right? And so now they're in the process of trying to re revitalize this, this area, this program. And so I think, we were, I think we're gonna do it. It's gonna be hard, 
because I guess they're going to try to build for the draft, and that's not easy. And because uh, somebody comes along and you work with this kid and make a good player out of him, that's another team owes them so much money you can't afford it to keep them. And uh, so in that sense, it might not be a, a, le a, le a, level, play a, a level playing field because you take the Yanks all the money they spend on those players. You figure they're going to be all right. The pitcher, the first baseman, the th third baseman, uh, the, the, the uh, center field, all those guys were played great for other teams. So, you, you know, you better win. See, here I think it's, it's, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to do that. But see what happens. Well, I never thought I was the one. All right, that's the dilemma there. And uh, just facetiously, every time I go to get my breakfast or I, or I go for a coffee and a bagel or something like that, the, as a legend, I still have to pay for it. So, so I don't know what, what is a legend. I don't know. It doesn't affect it in, in any way. So.